Today we're going to dive into some of the science behind what you saw in episode three when Pat White went from 41 mile an hour throwing the football to over 50 mile an hour in a matter of a few weeks. Basically, we're going to cover some of the drills and some of the mechanics that can be utilized to enhance the velocity on your football and decrease the risk of injury. This can be used both by pitchers or field positions or quarterbacks, anybody who is in a sport that involves the throwing mechanic. To start this drill, we focus on the three pound ball and the eccentric phase. Most injuries in throwing motions occur after the ball has been released and we're forced to decelerate the arm on the follow through. Let's discuss the eccentric phase. Eccentrically, we're about 120 to 140 percent stronger than we are constantly. What is an eccentric contraction? An eccentric contraction is when the tension in the cross bridges between actin and myosin is less than the resistance in the hand, thus the muscle lengthens. The way to fully understand the eccentric advantage of force production is very simple. Here's an example. If I take a person and I hang them over a cliff with a rope, pulling them up is much more difficult than lowering them down. It's because on the upward motion, I have to fully overcome their body weight and gravitational pull. On the downward motion, I just have to lower the mass with the assistance of gravitational pull. When we look at the human body, if eccentric contraction, we do not have to fully overcome the resistance. We're merely lowering the mass while actin and myosin are content connected. In, this, in the inverse action on a concentric contraction, we do have to overcome the resistance to create that movement. The second scientific principle we need to discuss is the force velocity curve. Force and velocity will always be inverse in the human anatomy. As force goes up, velocity will go down. As velocity goes up, force will go down. The reason for this is very simple. Here's an example. If I give you 135 pounds or 500 pounds, which will you bench press faster? Most people answer 135 pounds. I say, why? The answer is it's lighter. But let's really think about that. Both bars fall at 9.8 meters per second gravitational pull. Both are an inanimate object that cannot create movement. So the reality is the heavier weight does not change the motion or velocity of the motion. Something changes in you in your ability to accommodate the heavier or lighter load. What changes in you is relatively simple. If we're talking about a heavier load, it requires more connections between actin and myosin in the myofilaments to overcome the resistance than it does if we have a lighter load. So since muscle force has to develop, it cannot take place instantaneously. It takes more time to establish those connections. Thus, the motion will occur slower. It's an example would be if I was in the street and I had a large pickup truck or a small compact car. The large pickup truck would require more people to attach to the rope to pull it. The small car may be able to be pulled with one person. When we look at that, it takes more time to attach more ropes and have them pull than it does to attach one rope and pull. The human body works the same way when we're talking about overcoming force. Thus, the greater load will always move slower because it will require more connections to be established as we move through the sliding filament theory. What we are going to do is switch to the three pound ball. Now, Dan is going to take the same load and bring the arm forward, this time not releasing the ball. So keeping the load at a higher level in the eccentric phase as he decelerates the arm. This is different because Dan holding the ball increases the load on the shoulder in the scapular stabilizers as well as the rotator cuff. Now he invokes a higher level of contraction and more cross bridges to engage in the latter part of the movement while he decelerates the arm eccentrically. Let's talk about the second phase of this drill. Now we're going to look at the concentric phase. In the first phase, the heavier ball of three pounds elicited a higher level of contraction between actin and myosin in our muscle fibers. In other words, we have more active fibers than we normally do with a standard weight ball trying to overcome a greater resistance. Now, we're going to take the eccentric fibers that we utilize there and convert them to a concentric action. Normally, the ball would have been released, thus those fibers would have dropped out in 
our scapula stabilizers, as well as our rotator cuff. Now we have those engaged and we're going to translate them to a concentric action. Dan's going to go through the same motion with a three pound ball and release the ball and throw it downfield. The fibers that he utilized eccentrically are now being converted to the concentric action, both in the rotator cuff and the scapula stabilizer, decreasing the risk of injury and increasing the amount of fibers he uses on the concentric action. Now let's talk about the positions. First, we start this drill with Dan seated, legs out in front. This eliminates his lower body from producing force to transfer through his core into his arm. Instead, we must establish the force with the core region of our body, the rotator cuff, scapula stabilizers, and the other muscles that allow us to accommodate the concentric contraction. The second position, we move him up. Now, we allow him to use a portion of his lower limb and his pelvis, pelvic region to establish transfer into his core and into his arm, thus decreasing some of the activation on the rotator cuff as well as the scapula stabilizers and the rest of the muscles that propel him forward, but allowing him to accommodate a transfer of power through the pelvic region of his body. Last, we stand him and place him in a field position. Now he can utilize all of the body's proprioceptors to maintain the optimal position to generate maximal force and transfer a force from the tip of his toes to the tip of his fingertips. Most effectively, the way he will on the football field or on the baseball field. This accommodates the greatest velocity and greatest force production and allows us to do it the way we do it in the game we play. All of these exercises and the exercise phase and cycle that we use to train these athletes can be found on our website at barwithmethods.com. Underneath the store, you can look for our baseball players throwing program as well as our football players quarterback program. Both of these programs will allow you to understand the exercises, how they coincide with this training cycle, and the sets, repetitions, and where everything should fit into your phasing to increase the velocity on your player's arm and decrease the risk of injury so that he remains on the field.